Yeah, it's your boy AG, Cornerman Boxing, here live with legendary Hall of Fame manager, promoter, and many other things, Shelly Finkel. First of all, thank you for your time, sir. No and problem. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? I am good. Pardon me eating my lunch. <laughs> it's been a crazy day, but glad you're here, Andre. Right, and um, as we know, you, you're from Brooklyn, correct? You grew up yeah. New York's own, pretty much? Oh, yeah. Grew up in Brooklyn, lived in the same apartment building I was born in till I was 29. In 1973, I moved to Manhattan, and since then, I've lived in Manhattan. Right. Is that where you started the music career? Because yes. you're originally involved in the music industry, am I correct? Still am. This is a music office, went back to it, but handling Deontay and a couple of other future world champions. Um, in 73, my partner at that time and I did the largest music concert in America. Wow. It was bigger than Woodstock. Really? We had 600,000 people there. It was um, the Allman Brothers, Grateful Dead, in the band. Wow, that's impressive. I didn't. I mean, I, that, I was born in the late '80s, so right. And so I try to study kids. these things, but you know. So how old are you? Thirty? No, I'm 29. I'm getting there. Okay. I saw you managed. Um, well, you were involved with you know um, Jimi Hendrix and those kind of guys, and yep. the, was it the the Who? Is it as well? I had in Queens. Um, I had in Queens in 1968 Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, and the Chambers Brothers on one show. And the week before that, I had The Doors, and the opening act was The Who. Wow. Yeah, yeah my father's a big fan of all that music, so oh, sure. it's, it's around me, but, you know. Right. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Queens myself, you yeah. know, New York City pretty much. Near where you live now? Yeah, that's right. I, in Woodside, to be specific. Sure. Yeah. Before you were born, way before you were born, was Woodside's right near Sunnyside, isn't Correct, it? Correct, yeah. Yeah, Sunnyside story, yeah. Gardens was a great boxing court. Really? Yeah, great arena. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I love learning the history. That's yeah. actually very interesting. My father took me when I was a kid there to watch him train there. It was a gym, and it was a big arena. It held probably two, 3,000 people. Do you remember any fighters from around there, maybe, in those days? No, I know a lot from that era, but they weren't necessarily from Queens. Okay. You know, Tiger Jones and, um, you know, all the fighters from the 50s, 60s, and right. Griffith. And, yeah. Right, those are the kind of guys, you know, that we like to learn about and discuss because they paved the way for the guys that, you know, where they are today. What's <laughs> amazing is... In that era, way before actually, the um, fighters, like I have at home a program from um, Stanley Ketchell, who was a 45 round fight. Wow. Not 12 like today. And um, there's another guy, I'm drawing a blank, he was a middleweight champion. Um, he beat um, Walker. But in 1919, he fought 45 times and won every fight. And I'm just drawing a blank on his name. Tyson would say it in the second course. He's <laughs> he one studied of his him? favorite fighters, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You managed, you know, a lot of pretty much the best fighters in the 80s. You had, um, what is it, um, Mark Breland, Pernell Whitaker, Pernell Whitaker. Dan Holyfield, and Meldrick Taylor. They were from the 84 Olympic team. Right. They, uh, yeah, that's right. I don't believe there was an Olympic in 1980, right? Because of uh, right. President Boycott or something like that? President Carter boycotted the Olympics because of Afghanistan. Right. And what, what pretty much led you to go from the music industry into boxing around that era and, you know, manage to have such great fighters, pretty much the best? I always loved boxing. When I was a little kid and my dad was alive, we always watched it. Then, there was a kid who lived next door to me when we lived uptown, and uh, I took him to the Golden Gloves, and I saw Alex Ramos there. Mm -hmm. And Al do you know of Alex? I'm not too familiar. I've, I've read a little, you know, okay, his he name. He was from there. the Bronx. Right. Um, great amateur, could have been a great pro, but just got involved with 
the wrong thing, some women right. and stuff, and it just messed his head up. Um, and he um, was a four-time, I think it was four-time New York Golden Glove champ. He would have turned pro a after the Olympics, but since there was no Olympics, he went with me. Mm -hmm. And he introduced me to Mark Breland, and Mark Breland introduced me to others as it went. Wow, that's interesting. What was probably the, your most memorable moment, you know, during that time, maybe, or I guess as being involved as a manager in boxing? I have a lot of really incredible memories for different reasons. Sitting in the um, front row when Tyson knocked out... Um, I could picture him in front of me winning the title. He hit him with a left hook to the temp, Trevor Burbick. He hit Burbick with a left hook. Burbick went down, got up, went down, got up from one punch, and then got stopped. Um, Evander Holyfield winning the heavyweight championship. Right. Knocking out Buster Douglas, my first heavyweight champion. Wow. Colonel Whitaker winning the Olympics. Mark winning the Olympics. Excuse me. Um, a lot of great moments. Uh, Mike McCallum, who I managed, knocking out Donald Curry. Um, Pernell Whitaker, although he got a bad decision, he beat Chavez. Yeah. He knew it, <laughs> but it was a draw. Um, a lot of great moments. That was pretty much the fight of the, of the decade or something like that, right? I just, just read about it. About fight in boxing news from the UK, it had fights that should have had a second, and that one didn't. But. Um, he um, dominated him, and the same one of the heartbreaks was Richard Steele stopping the Meldrick Taylor Chavez fight with two seconds left and Meldrick ahead. Wow. 258 at the last round. He was about to become, uh, was, it, was that against Chavez? Yes. And he was about to become the champion? Yep. Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Well, they um one thing else I was wondering, you you managed um Tyson and Holyfield, was that during the same time or no. no. Oh, okay. I managed Holyfield when he won the title for a while. Then we just parted as friends and then um, I managed Tyson after the Holyfield biting till the end of his career. Oh, okay. All right, interesting. And you had Pacquiao as well, right? I had Pacquiao. I brought him to the title against uh, Eric Morales. Yeah, this is the full, you know, our viewers, a lot of them are younger, they probably don't know, so I wanted to touch first on, you know, the guys that probably might have started with. Right. But you also had a lot of guys that are great today, like Danny Garcia, am I correct? And, um, yes, and Keith had, Thurman. You had Keith Thurman also? Sure. Wow. And Lara. Right. And, but most important, Deontay Wilder. Right, now it's all about the top guy in the world, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> all right. Been with him 11 years. Since really? He was amateur, yes. How did you meet um, Deontay? I saw him at one of the tournaments, and I said, this kid is special. Because he started pretty late, right? Like at 19, I think he started boxing? Yes. So. But he had all this natural ability. Um, it came out, and it's continuing to come out. Every fighter he is fought, whether he knocked him out or went the distance, hit the canvas. Right. Pretty much everybody, yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, his record is actually unbelievable. I believe he has like the highest knockout ratio, something yep. like in history of yep. heavyweight boxing. So that says a lot. I mean, to but me, at this point, he also has the greatest record as a heavyweight, aside from Marciano. Wow! Yeah. Right, because he has no losses. Yep. He has that one draw where you know a lot of people felt could have gone either way with exactly. uh, too many politics yeah. <laughs> I actually thought that, that Fury wasn't getting up he did I thought the ref should have stopped it but didn't and luckily he finished strong if he had got hit and got hurt then they would have said he should have stopped it right yeah. usually the the ref stops that yeah, so I mean, he, I mean he got hit <laughs> yeah. yeah, that fight last night on the fight got stopped. You know, it was a good stoppage with Lamont oh, Peterson. Oh, Lamont. yeah. Yeah, but it yeah, was, you know, yeah. sometimes you should stop, you know. But luckily, yeah, like you said, Fury got up, finished. Right. And how did all the negotiations with that end with as far as Fury and Wilder? He went to top rank, and that pretty much killed everything? Or? Well, what happened is we did um, the first fight, 
And then we were supposed to do the second. Right. And we had agreed on terms. And then um, he, I don't know how the, the actual happened, but he ended up signing with Top Rank and ESPN. And they came to us and wanted us to sign a multi-fight deal with Deontay, and we wouldn't. So they said they were going to do a fight first. And in the meantime, the zone came in. So we decided to go a different direction, and that meant we weren't fighting Fury right away. Right, but there's still a possibility maybe that fight yes. can happen in it the future. It will happen. It will happen. Okay, there you guys have it. Yeah. Because uh, do you have a good relationship with Bob Arum and them? Or? Um, I have a good relation with his manager. Okay. I, I deal directly with All right. Manager. So, yeah, there you go, guys. A possibility. Yep. <laughs> we might get that. There's some exciting news right there. You will get that fight. It'll be next year, but you'll get it. Okay. That's even better. And um, as far as the whole thing with Joshua, how's that turning out? I mean, um, Nothing new since the meeting with Skipper. Um it didn't go the way either one of us had hoped, but um, that'll eventually happen too. These big fights, sometimes they take longer than they should or there's complications, but that fight will happen also. Right, so yeah, I mean, that's what pretty much everybody complains about, you know, the politics, they just want right. to see the best fight the best, and you know, that's pretty much good news that these fights will get made. They will. Next year you'll see Fury in the ring with the other. Wow, that's that's breaking news. I mean, taking it from the man himself, Shelly <laughs> Finkel. You know, so you can't get a better source than that. So, you know, I want to thank you for your time, Mr. Shelly Finkel. It's no been an absolute pleasure and honor to interview you and speak to you. No a man with, that's, you know, accomplished so much in this sport and in multiple industries, music as well. So, you know, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. And um, Are you finished with this? No, not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. But, all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Finkel. And many blessings to you and the rest of your fighters and whole staff, everything.